Okay, good morning, everyone. Today is the 29th day of Adar, which means tonight is Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh Nisan. It's Chaparain, the last moments in the last day of the month of Adar. We have to continue to increase in joy. We get all sorts of phenomena taking place. If you didn't get shook up already Friday morning with the earthquake, today the sun is going to be hidden from us for a few minutes just to remind us of Hashem's grace, the beautiful opportunities that we have every single day to wake up and to celebrate life and to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through the performance of mitzvahs by learning his Torah and helping each other and being kind. Speaking of being kind, there's a very nice woman here who is collecting for Pesach. And I hope that you can help her out a little bit on your way out by giving her some much needed staka for Pesach. Uh, Monday, okay, today's lesson. We're on page 53 in the Chayenu. Charlie, you ready? Good. In today's lesson, we continue discussing the world of Atsilus. The world of Atsilus is. The world of Atsilus is the highest of worlds. It's Eitzel HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's right next to the holy throne up in heaven. It's a totally godly experience. And it's where the highest souls reach. Those whose divine service in their earthly lifetime was even beyond intellectual inspiration. Obviously, the highest level we could reach, at least from an intellectual standpoint, is when we think about the greatness of Hashem, not just by utilizing our natural instinctual love of Hashem, but really putting our mind to it. But Dal Rebbe points out that there's an even higher level when your love and fear of Hashem is is higher than knowledge and understanding. And usually it's only the holiest of tzaddikim that are able to reach such a level. This contraction which Chachma bin Adas of Atsilus undergoes in order to radiate in Bria, again, the light comes from Hashem, it goes through the world of Atsilus and it starts to come down and it has to be contracted slowly over time as it comes down into this world in order for us to be able to relate to and exist. Um, Ilya, I'm sorry, I just want to mention, it's you. who's your attendance today? What's the first name? Devara Bas Meir? Let's also have in mind during the learning, as well as Menachem's father, Harav Yehuda Ben Moshe Yitzchak. Okay, so as the light of Hashem continues to come down, it gets contracted more and more. Just like the sunlight. Today we need glasses in order, even if you want to look at it, even as it's covered up. So if you look at the sun, huh? I don't know. But if you look at the sun when it's not covered up, the reason why we think we can look at it is because it's covered, and that's when it's going to damage your eyes, God forbid. But the rest of the time when it's not covered up, nobody thinks to look at the sun because it's very bright. And you need all sorts of things to protect you from not just the heat of the sun, but the rays of the sun. The light could damage your eyes, could damage your skin. Jeff was outside for a short while yesterday. He got red. He got a little sunburned. You have to put on screen, uh, you know, uh, sunscreen, and you have to wear a cap, and you have to wear sunglasses. So the same thing, Al-Darach Mashal, by way of example, is with the light of Hashem, there has to be all sorts of, a, there has to be a screening process. Otherwise, the light of Hashem, I don't want to say you get burned, but it's it's too powerful for a person to be able to, like no they they were they were assumed by the light of Hashem. When it comes to the world of Atsilos, you don't have these types of screens. You don't have these types of, it's like being much closer to the sun. Anything there doesn't even get burned up. It's non-existent because it gets, it's bottled to Hashem. 
שאין להם מכינס צמצום כל כך, אי אפשר לזכולים נבראים לקאבה מהם. And I encourage everyone, if you're reading along, say the words verbally, as we mentioned, it's important to verbalize the words of Tehidu. So when you get closer to Hashem in the world of Atzilus, where Chabad, Chochma bin Adas, are not contracted to such a degree, as in Bria, and then Yitzira and Asiya, so the lower worlds, God's light is more contracted as the, as the levels go down. And he mentions also, and he adds, to such a degree, the Alter Rebbe says, for the very fact of there being Sviris, meaning, Individual defined categories already means they're separate from Hashem. The minute you call them Chachma bin Adas, there's something you can call an independent something, even if they're close to Hashem. Whereas in Atsilus and getting close to Hashem, it's completely nullified. There's no definition and there's no independent entity on its own, on their own. Therefore, their thought cannot grasp there at all, meaning the thought and intellect of the created beings. Even the angels, even the spirits in anything can in no way grasp the light radiating in Atsilos, the higher worlds, meaning right next to the essence of our Kaddish Baruch <laughs> For this reason, Atsilos is the abode of the great Sadiqim. What does it mean, the, the abode of the great Sadiqim? Their souls, their neshamas, the way they're able to tap into. And again, let's not think in terms of up there. It could be right here as well. It's just being able to reach that level. Only the holiest of tzaddikim. <laughs> you know, it's funny. On my screen right now, like based on the time of the year and Honestly, where the sun that's, is. That's the main thing. Okay. Someone's, someone's uh, phone is not muted, so please throw it on mute. Please, thank you. Um, the light is hitting the camera in, a, in an interesting way. So you have rays of the sun. Mori, come here. I want you to see it. You have rays of the sun coming right in over my shoulder. Not that I'm any holy tzaddik by any stretch, but it's just interesting how right as we're talking about Atsilus and the rays of the sun. and Look, 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 look. Wow. See what I mean? Can't make that up. If I move it back. Okay, so now I moved it back. It went away. All right. So let's finish up. Though who service the tzaddikim, the holiest and righteous people of the generations, whose service of Hashem is far superior even to fear and love, derived from understanding and knowing His greatness, right? You might be the smartest person in the world, but the greatest tzaddik is beyond that. It's not a matter of how smart he is. It's how connected his soul is. Just as Atsilut transcends by far the level of the understanding and knowledge of a created being's intellect, because once you say it's a created being, thinking and understanding, you're already lost, you're already outside of that realm. It's well above, it's complete, like our Avais, like they were, they, they were Merkava, they were completely subservient and given over to Hashem. I don't know, what's the best nullification is the loosely translated term of bittel. Bittel is bittel. You're, you're completely given over. Their service, the holiest of tzaddikim, are on the level of an actual chariot of Hashem. They're completely nullified. Their existence is nothing before Hashem. They're completely incorporated within Hashem. Them and all that they possess are within Hashem's light. Through their observance of Torah and Mitzvah. Like we say that our patriarchs are Avais, they are the chariots of, the, of Hashem. Not what they do, but they themselves are completely nullified to Hashem. Why? Because every moment of their lives were dedicated to complete service of Hashem. So the patriarchs were constantly in the state of nullification before God. They never said, okay, you know, uh, nine to five, or I'll work a little bit extra, I'll work extra hours, but by 10 o'clock, I need a little break. And then, you know, there's no such thing. It's even when you're on the job, even when you're working and it's difficult and it's challenging, you're like, you got another job to run to, you don't drop the ball and say, okay, when I get to Shoal or when I'm at home, 
or when I'm in the right frame of mind. Maybe when I'm in my car by myself, I'll think about Hashem. But when I'm with the client, you know, I got to focus on my work. No, your work and every single thing that you do is dedicated to Hashem. Hashem wants you to work. But we do for the right reasons. So through their Torah and Mitzvahs, they affect the highest degree of self nullification before Hashem. And the abode of their souls, we're not talking about after they pass away. Our souls are, there's, and we talked about this in the Mayim Roshav this afternoon as well, a portion of our souls are in heaven as well, fully connected. Again, there's no time and space when it comes to souls. So we have the soul within our body giving us life, but a part of our soul is already above and still above and remains there. Again, above meaning spiritually above. And their soul, their soul is connected to and with and nullified within this realm of this world of Atsilus, Mamish close to Hashem, ready to do Hashem's will at all times. So the takeaway is the potential of a mitzvah when done selflessly and with total devotion, we become a vehicle for Hashem. So maybe we're not on the level of our others. Obviously, it's a very high level to strive to be to reach, but nevertheless. We could have moments of being a Merkava Tashem, just like we talked about moments of weakness, moments of being, you know, on a higher level by learning Torah and dedicating ourselves during Davani, thinking with Kavana about the words that we're saying and the Yichud of Hashem. So, too, we think about our life, say, Hashem, I'm yours. And when we do that, especially during the time of, uh, of doing a mitzvah, we reach the highest possible level. And we also not just affect ourselves but we take everything around us, our families, our friends, and we reach a higher level. So let's go to it, guys. Let's get to it. Let's go do as many possible mitzvahs as we can muster today. And even when we think we're not doing a mitzvah, if we're serving Hashem, that itself, that alone is also a mitzvah. Even when we work, and even when we're driving, and even when we're eating lunch, whatever it is that we're doing, we're, with all our, first let's back up, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. Let me just check out one second. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.